Logic is the science of correct reasoning. Logic originated with the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle. It was further developed by the medieval scholastic philosophers. In the 19th and 20th century, logic saw exponential growth with the age of computers. However, when logic is applied to specific subject matters, it is important to note that not all logic inferences constitute a scientifically valid demonstration. This is because a piece of formally correct reasoning is not scientifically valid unless it is based on a true or primary starting point. What is reasoning? According to Aristotle, reasoning is an argument in which certain assumptions or premises are laid down and then something other than these necessarily follows. Let's get into things. Suppose we have a circuit diagram with two switches and one light bulb. We can look at two specific diagrams, a complete series circuit and a complete parallel circuit. Firstly, we look at a series circuit example. For this, we will use what is called a truth table to represent the switches and light bulb. If we turn on the first switch and we turn on the second switch, the light, the light bulb will turn on. If we turn on the first switch, but we turn off the second switch, then the light bulb will be switched off. Vice versa, if we turn off the first switch, and we turn on the second switch, then the light bulb will be switched off. Also, if we turn off both switch 1 and switch 2, then the light bulb will be turned off. This is how the logical AND operator behaves. It can be drawn as such. Secondly, we can look at a complete parallel circuit. From the truth table we can see that if switch 1 is turned on and switch 2 is turned on, the light bulb will be turned on. If switch 1 is turned on and switch 2 is turned off, then the light bulb will still be turned on. If we turn off switch 1 and turn on switch 2, then the light bulb will still be turned on. The only situation where the light bulb is turned off is when we have switch 1 turned off and switch 2 turned off. This is how the logical OR operation behaves. It can be drawn as such. Now that we have looked at AND and OR, we can move on to propositional logic, or in other words, statements. If we take the proposition, if you slay a dragon, then you are a hero. We can split this up into two sections. The first we call P, the second we call Q. From this example, we would have P as you slay a dragon, and we would similarly have Q as you are a hero. Hence, we can say that if P, then Q, also written as P implies Q, implies is usually represented as an arrow. If we look at the truth table from P implies Q using the example then, in the truth table, we can see that T represents true and F represents false. If you slay a dragon, then you are a hero. This is true. If you slay a dragon and then you are not a hero, this statement is false. This is because we said at the start that if you slay a dragon, then you are a hero. But, in this case, you're not a hero after slaying a dragon, which doesn't satisfy the statement. You should be a hero if you slay a dragon. If you don't slay a dragon, then you're not a hero. This statement is true, because if you're a peasant, then you couldn't have slain a dragon, which satisfies the statement, assuming everyone who isn't a hero is a peasant. It makes sense to be a peasant and not have slain a dragon. What about the last one? If you don't slay a dragon, 
then you're a hero. This statement is true, because you don't have to slay a dragon to be a hero, as this statement has no restriction on what makes you a hero. Hence, Superman! Now, let's talk about tautologies. This is when the proposition is always going to be true. Suppose you have an example involving P's and Q's. Here we have P implies Q, or not Q. We let the whole statement equal A. Not Q is the same as the negation of Q, which is the opposite of Q, and can be written as such. In the column P, we have true, true, false, false. In the column Q, we have true, false, true, false. Because the negation of Q is the opposite of Q, the values are false, true, false, true. For P implies Q, true implies true is true, true implies false is false, false implies true is true, and false implies false is true, as we worked out before and explained before. Now, if we look at the whole proposition, A, P implies Q or not Q, we can say that true or false is true, false or true is true, true or false is true, and true or true is true. Therefore, this is a tautology because all of the values are true. Finally, let's talk about contradictions. A contradiction is when the statement is always false. It is the opposite of a tautology. Suppose we have an example. Q implies not P and P and Q. We made Q implies not P equal to A and we made P and Q equal to B. Now, let's draw the truth table. So from the truth table, we'll have P equal to true, true, false, false. We'll have Q equal to true, false, true, false. Because the negation of P is the opposite of P, the values are false, false, true, true. If we have a look at A, we can see that true implies false is false, false implies false is true, true implies true is true, and false implies true is true. If we have a look at B, true and true is true, true and false is false, false and true is false, and false and false is false. Now we look at the whole proposition, A and B, so false and true is false, True and false is false, true and false is false, and true and false is false. Therefore, the proposition is a contradiction as all the values are false. If content covered, then end. Therefore, the end.